The coronavirus pandemic has completely overwhelmed microbiology labs across the U.S. According to the latest CDC data, more than 200 million COVID-19 tests have been processed this year, and millions more will be needed in the months ahead. Holiday travel and the surge in new infections have only intensified the demand, putting lab workers under intense strain. Rachel Leesman joins me now. She is the Director of Clinical Microbiology at the University of Kansas Health System, where she oversees a lab that processes tests for infectious diseases. Rachel, thank you for joining us. So walk us through what it takes to process a COVID-19 test. Absolutely. Um, the steps between when the specimen comes out of the patient and hits the lab before it goes onto the instrument are pretty time consuming. So um, we have to make sure that the specimen is properly labeled. We barcode everything. This helps us find the specimen label later if we need to come back in and relocate it. We also usually have to move the liquid in our test to a new tube that's more compatible with our instruments. Um, after that, most of our specimens undergo an inactivation process. This helps keep our staff a little little bit safer, um, and then it goes on the testing instrument. Testing on the instrument takes somewhere um, on the order of two to eight hours, depending on which platform you use, on which machine you're using. Um, and after that, then we review every single one of those results before we release those to the patient so that they get their um, COVID testing results. Rachel, it's very interesting. You're talking about the inactivation process that it goes through as a method to try and help uh, protect your, your workers. I've always wondered about that, actually. Um, can you tell us how, how safe is your job? Or what, what types of, um, of job risks do you face uh, working at a microbiology lab like yours? Yeah, the laboratory is a pretty controlled environment, and so we put up a lot of safety nets around our staff in the lab and the specimens that we work with. So we're always thinking about how do we protect our staff, um, both from working with these COVID-19 specimens, but also um, with any of the other microbes that we're growing on a daily basis. So um, we work in biosafety cabinets that help keep um, the specimen away from us um, and prevent us from breathing out. In. We are masked and we wear eye protection in case there's any splashes or spills. And with COVID-19, we do sometimes inactivate that virus. So it doesn't impact the um, molecular testing. It doesn't impact the virus RNA, but it does keep it so that our staff might not be infected. And so those are some of the mitigation efforts that we um, make. As far as I'm aware, um, with regard to um, the COVID-19 pandemic, there haven't been any laboratory exposures. And we certainly haven't had any in our laboratory. Um, but keeping our staff safe is one of the most important components of, of my job and of laboratory medicine. That is fascinating. Well, microbiology labs are also processing tests for other infectious diseases. How has this surge in COVID-19 tests affected your workload and, and your, your ability to process all these other tests? Because as you know, Americans are still getting other infectious diseases. It isn't just COVID-19, even though so much of our focus is there right now. Yeah, um, it's certainly been a challenge um, in part to get enough staff to do this work um, and make sure that we're managing all of the other infectious disease testing and patient care that we do. Um, our volumes um, on the other types of tests dropped a little bit in the beginning of the pandemic um, as a lot of our hospital systems were locked down, but they've completely rebounded. And in the, for the most part, we're actually doing more non-COVID testing than we were before the pandemic. So it's been a challenge challenge. Our staff work a lot of overtime. They work long hours. Um, it's always important that we maintain the quality and the um, time to give results that we had prior to the pandemic. So we really are balancing um, both the pandemic management as well as our, our normal patient care. Well, thank you for doing all of that to keep us safe um, and keep us informed. And thank you for coming on our show tonight. Rachel Leesman, thank you.